I'm Katie Sewell, and this is A Bittersweet Moment with Tiffany Parks. Hello, and welcome to The Bittersweet Life. I'm Tiffany Parks, and this is your midweek bittersweet moment. I thought I'd talk today a little bit about the project that I recently completed that if you follow me over on Instagram, you will have already heard about or seen me posting about. And that is that I decided back in February that I was going to try to write an entire draft of a book in the period of Lent. Now, this might sound familiar to some of you, similar to a project that goes on all over the world every November, which is called NaNoWriMo, which stands for National Novel Writing Month. And that's kind of where I got the idea. I've participated in NaNoWriMo twice so far. Uh, NaNoWriMo is a, actually it's an international writing event, I suppose you could call it. And people from all over the world try to write a 50,000 word novel in the 30 days of November. It's also very cool because they have an online presence and you can meet up with other people who are doing it. You can definitely get encouragement from other people. So I always recommend writers try NaNoWriMo at least once in their life uh, because it's very fun. And even if you don't complete it, you usually get a lot of work done. So in this case, I want to write a 90,000 word book. Uh, That's about the length that books of my genre and my age group are. Uh, I'm writing young adult fiction, uh, historical fiction slash thriller. So I uh, know that through my agent. He asked me to keep my most recent book that I've completed under 90,000 words. So I thought that would be a, a good marker. And I had a little bit more than a month to do it. Lent is officially 46 days. And I I got the idea actually on Ash Wednesday. And I like doing things like that. I like having specific dates to start projects and having specific dates to end projects. It was also, I thought, very auspicious because the date that I started was the 17th of February, which is not only my mom's birthday, but also the date that Giordano Bruno was executed. And that scene, that event actually takes place in the book that I was planning to write. So I thought, you know, this is very auspicious to be starting on this date. So, you know, I thought about it and I thought, oh my gosh, it's going to be so much work. It's going to be tiring because it's even more words per day than I have to write for NaNoWriMo. I think if you do NaNoWriMo, you have to write about 1,670 words around there per day. And this was going to be about 1,950 words per day. But I decided, you know what, I have the time to do it right now because I'm still off of work mostly. And so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to try it. And I dove right in. But here's what I did that made all of the difference. I posted about it on my Instagram page. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can find me at Tiffany Parks Rome, which is, of course, different from the Bittersweet Life's page, which is the Bittersweet Life podcast. So make sure you're following uh, following us on both of those uh, different accounts. But I usually post stuff about my writing on my personal account, Tiffany Parks Rome. So anyway, I posted about this. I put it out there. I said, I'm going to try to do this. But I didn't just put it out there on the day I started. Every single day at the end of the day, I posted how many words I had written that day. And, you know, if I was on track. And I swear to you, that is what made all of the difference. I think that if I hadn't done that, I might not have kept it up. On those nights when I didn't have time to write during the day and it it got to be quite late before I started and I was super tired, I'm not a night person, I could very easily have just been like, you know what, I just just can't do it tonight. I'm just going to go to bed. But that the thought that I had made this public promise, I mean, not that anybody besides me cares. Uh, I'm sure no one really does, but but I cared. And I, and I need, personally, I need that kind of outer accountability. I find it extremely helpful whenever I'm trying to accomplish something difficult. So that was probably the biggest thing that made me able to do it. Now, a couple of tips that I always offer to people who are maybe trying NaNoWriMo for the first time or want to do this kind of thing. There's something called word sprints, which I find extremely useful. And what you do is you basically take a timer 
or I like to use an hourglass. I have a five minute hourglass and a 30 minute hourglass, but really I think 15 minutes is the sweet spot for word sprints. So I'm looking for a 15 minute hourglass. You basically sit down and whatever kind of timer you have, you, you set it for the time that you choose. Start with five minutes, but work your way up to 15 minutes. Sometimes you can, you know, some people do a half an hour. I find that a bit long. But you try to write as many words as possible in that short period of time, in that short spurt of time. And when you do that, sometimes you can get like almost all of your writing for the day done in that one really short spurt. You tell yourself, okay, I'm not going to let myself stop and reread the sentence. I'm not going to let myself get up and get a snack. I'm not going to let myself, whatever it might be, just stop and stare out the window and think and try to get inspiration. You say, okay, I can do that later. It's not like I have to do the whole day like this. It's just five minutes or it's just 15 minutes. And it's a doable amount of time. You will be shocked after you finish those 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes to see how many words you actually wrote. I'm shocked every single time I do it when it's been a long time since I've done it. So definitely do word sprints. I don't necessarily do them every single day, but if I'm feeling like, oh, I'm just having a hard time getting the words out today, I do a word sprint and it always helps so much. Another thing, and this is of course something you have to do ahead of time, have a detailed outline. I cannot tell you how much my outline saved me. Now, I needed to write a very detailed outline before I started working on this book because my agent requested it from me. So I had no choice really in this matter. I really, when I was working on it, could not wait to get started on the actual book. But I knew that I had to do this outline and I was under a time crunch. And so I just forced myself to do it. And of course, as with all outlines, you can change it, you can veer from it, you can totally throw it out if it's not working. But if you have an idea of where your story's going, creating an outline that really has specific plot points will mean that when you're working on your, whether it's NaNoWriMo or your own project that you come up with of trying to write in a very short amount of time, write something long, I should say, in a moderately short amount of time, you won't ever be stuck and be like, oh my gosh, I have no idea where this story is going. You will have a guide. Like I said, you might veer from it. You might come up with some amazing ideas. In fact, you probably will come up with some amazing ideas. But you certainly will have this guide that means sometimes I get stuck on a chapter or a scene and I'm like, I can't finish this chapter, but I know what's coming next. So let me just stop where I am and go to the next chapter and I'll finish it later. And that can be incredibly helpful because sometimes you, you get stuck on one particular thing and it can totally derail you. But if you know you have to get those words done, just move on, go to the next thing, and then you know you can always come back and do it. Also, this is a little trick I have for keeping my word count up. When I write notes to myself, and I always write notes to myself when I'm doing a first draft, instead of writing them in the sort of the comments section of your document, write them directly into the manuscript in brackets. I wouldn't ordinarily do this, but it's great because it actually ups your word count. It's kind of a cheat, but I do it. Now, you might be asking yourself, especially if you are not a writer yourself, what are the benefits of this? Why should I write in such a way? It doesn't seem, I mean, you can't possibly get your best writing out when you're writing so fast. Well, actually, you'd be surprised. Sometimes you you will come up with really great prose. It's, I, I, to be honest, for me, it's rare to come up with really beautiful prose when I'm writing like this. But it can happen because you can get into a sort of flow state when you're working like this. I have a hard time getting into a flow state because I just, I'm a very distractible person. But it can happen. Working like this can sort of push you into that state. And that's when like the really great work comes out. But there are other benefits that outweigh the detriments of maybe not having your most beautiful writing. First of all, when you write like this, you are forced to not have to wait for inspiration to come. You can't wait for inspiration to come. You can't force inspiration. I mean, they say you can't force inspiration. But if you sit around as a writer waiting for this elusive inspiration to come, you might never write a single word. You might just never have the perfect moment, you know, the perfect day, the perfect place, the perfect beverage at your side, your computer working perfectly. You're never going to get everything perfect. And you're never going to have 100% inspiration every single day. And so when you have to do this, when you know, I have to get 2,000 words written today or 1,000 words written today. And if I don't, I'm going to 
completely lose momentum and I'm not going to finish this project, you teach yourself to write without it. And I find nine times out of 10, once I just sit down and start writing, the inspiration does come. Just the mere act of sitting down to write is what gets those creative juices flowing. Sitting in front of the computer and staring at it, it's not very inspiring, I have found. So much of writing is just showing up every day. And when I say every day, I mean almost every day. I'm not one of those people who says you have to write every single day of your life, otherwise you're not a writer. Obviously, things are going to come up. You're going to have hard days. You're going to be sick. You're going to be really tired. Whatever it is, you're not going to be able to write every single day. But it has to be more days than not. It has to be something that becomes a daily habit for you. So that when you don't write on a specific day, you feel like you didn't brush your teeth that day. You feel like there's something that you didn't do that you were supposed to do. It doesn't feel right. And so if you can get to that point where writing feels so much a part of your day and a part of your life that it feels weird to not do it, then you really are on the right track. And like I said, you just show up. If you just show up for your writing every day, I feel like that is half of the battle for being a writer. And the other half is finishing, which is another thing this this is good for, because it's very easy to start a project, to get excited about a project, get a new idea and start working on it, And then maybe sort of have your enthusiasm peter out. And maybe you come up with another idea and you're like, okay, this new idea seems really exciting to me. I'm going to put the other idea on hold for a little while uh, because I'm not feeling very inspired and work on this new project. Well, the problem with that is that you can do that on an endless loop and never finish anything. So that's why another reason I think these projects are so beneficial is because it forces you Maybe not to finish the project, because I'll be honest, I did not finish my book. I did finish the 90,000 words. I finished it the night before, actually, I was supposed to finish. But I didn't finish the book <laughs> because I'm, I'm an overwriter. So I've written too many words, needs to be cut down. And so I didn't get to the third, most of the third act. That's okay. I'm really close. And I know that I will finish because I've gotten so far. My momentum has carried me so far. And I'm just going to be able to to finish because that momentum has become so strong. But if you don't give yourself enough time, you might not build up that the momentum that you need to finish a major project like that. It takes a lot of stamina. So I would say resist starting a new project when you're working on another project. The best time, this is a, a side note that doesn't really have anything to do with this type of project, but the best time to start a new project is when you have started querying your current project, when you've sent it out into the world when you've sent it to agents or sent it to publishing houses, that's the best time to start a new project. You sort of put that one on hold and you start something new and get your creative juices flowing so that you don't necessarily dwell on the stress of waiting to hear back from people and the inevitable rejection that always is going to come with that. But that's a side note. Back to this sort of speed writing project. Another thing that it does is it teaches you that first drafts are supposed to be bad. And everybody kind of knows this. Everybody kind of says this. Oh, yeah, your first draft is terrible. But until you've written like this, you really don't know how bad that first draft can be. (laughs) Because, I mean, there is something so freeing about writing a sentence that is so poorly written and being like, that's okay. That's okay. I have to write like this. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get it done. And I think when you're doing a first draft under normal circumstances, not in this way, you might be tempted to go back and edit as you go. Now, there are some very successful writers who always edit as they go. And that's just their way of writing. Every morning they read what they wrote the day before, they edit it, and then they start. I can't do that. I get too caught up in it. I can't make enough progress when I work like that. I like to go all the way through, write the whole draft. When I'm done, go back and start editing. So obviously you might have a different way of doing it. But if you do it like that, Give yourself permission to write a sentence that you're like, oh my God, this is written like an eight-year-old would write. It's okay. You're getting your ideas down. There's a brilliant quote, and I, I, t- I should have written it down because I can't remember the name of the, uh, the person who said this, but the quote is, I'm just shoveling sand into my sandbox so that I can build my castle. And I think that is so per- a perfect way to describe a first draft. You're literally just dumping all of your ideas in so that then you can make something beautiful out of it. And another great writer who has a, a similar take on it is Neil Gaiman, 
whose master class I just took, by the way, wonderful. I can't recommend it enough. He said, the first draft is just you telling yourself the story. And that's maybe even better at capturing the idea of it. I'm just telling myself the story. It doesn't have to be written beautifully. It doesn't have to have beautiful imagery and gorgeous syntax. It just is just me telling myself the story so that I know it well enough to be able to, to really write it. I love this way of writing because it really gives you permission to write poorly. And nobody's ever going to see this. Nobody. You're obviously going to edit it heavily before even showing it to your writer friends or your beta readers. Another thing that writing this fast will do is it will sort of put your inner critic or your inner editor on mute. I think all writers have this sort of voice in their head that's telling them, oh, that's not written well, or oh, you sound like a totally illiterate person, or you can't spell, or your grammar is so bad, or you know, your sentence structure is really juvenile, what, whatever your inner critic is saying to you. When you write that fast, you just you don't have time to listen to that voice. It's going to pop up every now and then. But I promise you, if you do this, it will pop up less and less and less and less until you're almost laughing at it. Like I, I almost laugh sometimes at the things that I write when I'm writing like this because I'm like, I almost take pride in it. I'm like, wow, this is such a bad sentence. I'm almost proud of it. And mostly, as I mentioned before, writing like this is just such a great way to create your writing habit. I went to a talk once by the wonderful writer Caroline Lawrence who wrote the Roman mysteries children's books that are mysteries taking place in ancient Rome and the thing that I remember most from that talk was that writing is really a craft you know I mean I think we all get up we get caught up in this idea that it's an art and it is an art but when you think of it only as an art it seems so daunting and it seems so unattainable and that's you know where this sort of inspiration idea comes in oh i have to be inspired i have to you know i have to have all of this amazing inspiration i can't just make it snap my fingers and make it happen but what she taught was really writing is a craft it's something that takes certain skills and these skills can be learned and they can be honed it is not just about your innate creativity your talent that you were born with. It's really a craft like any other. When you work at it, you get better at it. And you know, you might try to do this and you might decide after a couple of more drafts of it that it's not a good project, that you don't like the book, that it, it isn't as good as, you know, that it isn't a quality piece of work. And it's not wasted time. It's literally you working on your craft, just like a runner or an ice skater or a pianist has to practice for a certain number of hours. That's exactly the same thing. It's you practicing. So I hope that I've inspired all of the writers who listen to this show to give something like this a try. Uh, you don't need to wait for November to participate in NaNoWriMo. Uh, there's also, I think, a NaNoWriMo that goes on in April, if I'm not mistaken, although April is almost over now. But my point is, you can do what I did and come up with your own timeline and your own starting and ending time. I thought Lent was sort of the perfect period of time and also on an auspicious start day. So that's what I chose, but you can choose anything. Maybe you have a month off of work, do it at that time, see what you can do. Deadlines are your friends as a writer. I hope that I have given you guys some inspiration to start a writing project like this. Thanks so much for listening. Join us again. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe to the show if you haven't already. And if you love it, leave us a good review and tell all of your friends about us. Also, if you have an idea for a bittersweet moment, send it to us by email or voice memo. We're at bittersweetlife at mail.com or find us using the contact page at thebittersweetlife.net. <laughs>